Hey, Steve here. In this video, I'm just going to be doing a quick RAW versus JPEG comparison to show you exactly why you should always be shooting RAW files if you plan on doing any kind of processing to your photos in Photoshop. Because the difference can be hard to detect sometimes, but you can rest assured the quality issues that I'm about to demonstrate here are present all over your image when editing JPEGs, whether you can see them by eye or not. And the issue compounds on itself too, meaning the more you edit, the bigger the issues will become. Now, shooting RAW is a critical prerequisite for the, creating the cleanest and best quality results in Photoshop. And to do this myself, I use a tried and tested six stage processing workflow to edit all my own landscapes. You can download the free guide to that workflow that details all six stages using the link in the description below this video. But for now, let's get on with the demo. So what I've got on the screen at the moment is an image that I've edited and processed and all the layers are still intact. This is based on the raw file. Uh, it's in full 16 bit still. And then I've saved and then reopened a JPEG version of this very same image. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, so if you just sort of flip between the two, then you can see there's practically no difference just looking at the finished result. But let's say we wanted to add an adjustment that's going to brighten up the, uh, the shadows in this image. And I'll start with the JPEG. So, you know, I'm working on a finished image here, but you know, the rule, the same rule applies no matter what stage of the workflow you're at. And I'm going to like increase the shadows a little bit more than I would uh, normally, um, but just so that you can see the effect and see the issues that are going to be occurring in the shadows. So let's add a curves adjustment. And I'm just going to push the curve up to brighten the image. So I'm just going to a point where the shadow detail appears to be visible in this rock in the middle. So, you know, if, if I were to be uh, making this kind of adjustment to brighten the rock up this much, obviously I would be masking it in because pretty much the rest of the image is uh, overexposed now. So let's uh, copy this same adjustment across to the original image and I'll drop it there. So it looks pretty much the same. Uh, there are a few artifacts here in the foreground that you can see, but that's just that's just Photoshop displaying it, uh, not displaying it the best. If we actually zoom in, we can see they kind of smooth out and aren't such an issue. Uh, that's just to do with how Photoshop uh, previews these uh, adjustment layers. So there's a funny banding here. You can ignore that for now. Um, so let's come back to the JPEG. And now let's zoom in on that rock. So I'm going to zoom in to 300%. Now, if we look around here, you can see what's happening. So the rock has got this kind of purpley reddish hue to it. And then where it transitions to like a, a grayer, sort of blacker color. It looks really blocky and you know, it's just, it's not, it's not very good basically. So hopefully you can see that in the video. If, uh, if you watch on a computer, then put this video to full screen and you should definitely be able to see what I'm referring to here. It's kind of all pixelated and just looks weird. Let's now come across back to the TIFF, zoom in to 300%. And we can see here that issue does not occur. So if we just toggle between the two, now this is the JPEG, this is the TIFF, or the based on the raw file, JPEG, raw file, JPEG, raw file. So you can see here it's a lot smoother transition between you know the the even darker shadows on the underside of this near side of the rock and the slightly less dark. Um, face of this rock. So again, just so we can see that transition uh, or the comparison, JPEG, blocky, weird, horrible transitions between the colors and raw file, not so much. Uh, you can also see it down here where this, uh, this water that's got the sun shining directly on it. So where it transitions from this kind of light purple into this dark shadow, 
we've got a thick sort of weird blocky band here and in the raw file version that's completely smoothed out so that's it in a nutshell um, this is the yeah this is the best way that I can kind of think of demonstrating the kind of issue that raw versus JPEG or you know shooting in JPEG and then editing that um, you know this is the best way I can think of to demonstrate that uh, so if you if you imagine you know you've you've done something like this at the start of your workflow you've brightened up some foreground rocks you know you don't necessarily notice it on this zoomed out version or the zoomed out view but then you know if if you were to brush this in using layer masking uh, so that you've lightened the for, for uh, the the near side of this rock and then later on you went to add even more contrast and do further edits then the fact that this blockiness exists you know it's just it's not going to get any better like if we add contrast here then it becomes even more pronounced um, you know so like I said with every adjustment from here on after it's just compounding on itself making the issue worse and the end result is a, a kind of a blocky crunchy weird looking image at the end so that's pretty much it that's what I wanted to show you the uh, you know in the raw versus JPEG uh, debate I'm sure by now you're already convinced that raw is the way to go uh, but I figured I get enough questions about it that it's just worth making this video anyway just so that you can see with your own eyes rather than just being told what the issue is so with that thanks for watching I'll talk to you next time